NTV. Welcome back to Morning at NTV. We are counting a few days left to the International Women's Day celebrations on Sunday, 8th March. Now, it would be proper to have a conversation on women empowerment in the music industry. I have an arts and culture journalist in studio with me. That is uh, uh, Mr. Andrew Kagwa. Mr. Andrew Kagwa, good yep. morning and thank you for joining me right here in studio. Good morning. I'm not afraid to shake your hand. <laughs> You're not you haven't been in Wuhan. <laughs> yes, not yet. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, I'm easy. So there's this scare. Uh, people are not even willing to shake each other's hands. Everything is, I'm telling you, there's too much fear over this coronavirus uh, issue. But, but Before we head into that, how has it affected the music industry right here in Uganda? Do no, we have no, people? Not mm -hmm. yet, not yet, because, uh, well, Africa generally has not yet been affected yeah. that much. Mm. And before many, before Africa is affected, yeah. Uganda will, Ugandans will rarely react. So have, have there been any negative effects on our music industry? Are there people who are actually getting their sound systems from China who are now saying, okay, we can't do business anymore? Uh, it's not yet happening. It's not yet happening. <laughs> Let's go back to women empowerment in music ahead of uh, Sunday 8th March International Women's Day. Yeah. So what are some of those challenges women are grappling with in this industry? Uh, like, okay, one, one of the things is many people will be asking if I'm the right person to you are your do this. And culture journalist. Yes, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an arts and culture journalist, but mm -hmm. I'm also a man. Mm. But, <laughs> but, but you mm -hmm. see, th there are many challenges because uh, this industry, like I said earlier, is almost built on a more like a patriarchy foundation. Like mm -hmm. uh, you could notice that from the time it started, many of the managers have been men, uh, many of the executives have been men, mm -hmm. even if it's to talk about film, many of the filmmakers mm -hmm. have been men. So because of that, their perspective is usually male. Uh, their point of view is usually male. Uh, the, way, the way they think about many things when they are talking about the industry mm -hmm. is usually very male. Uh, when it comes to challenges women face, let's say music, mm -hmm. uh, you will notice that uh, when a female artist is starting out, she's already judged. She's already judged by the society. They will judge the way she, the way she dresses. Because mm -hmm. I remember yesterday I was talking about an artist, a new artist from Swangs Avenue. Mm -hmm. She's called Azawi. And uh, I remember one of the comments I got, I do not like the way she dresses. Mm -hmm. Like she has had like one performance mm -hmm. and one video and then someone is already complaining about the way she's dressing mm -hmm. so by the time a female artist is coming into the industry they they are already very judged they are judged for their choices of picking art over mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. uh, they are judged for the way they are going to dress even before they dress that mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. and they will be judged for who they choose to have as their spouse mm -hmm. and that's already a very big challenge because a male artist will come into this industry when he's allowed to basically do anything to mm -hmm. make it. Like, <coughs> I remember when Bebe Kool and Camille were making it, mm -hmm. when they were starting out, there was that time they went on stage and they were wearing G strings. Mm -hmm. And then you remember that time when Bebe Kool stepped on the table that had um, another girl in car yes, yes. There was a fracas, but if it was a female artist, probably she would have been banned to death. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are very few things a woman who has come into the industry mm -hmm. can do to grab attention, mm -hmm. and she doesn't lose it in the process. You know, this you know this conversation about inequality and the gender gap, it's not only for the women. Ask mm -hmm. the men too, and you've been hearing from so many uh, women activists saying, no, 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 no. If we are to beat this gender inequality issue, we need to involve the <coughs> men. <coughs> so, <laughs> 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 so in, in your own opinion, how best can we arrest this situation and bridge that gap of well, inequality in like the music when industry? It, when it comes to and the music entertainment industry, as a whole. Mm. Uh, one, with the fans, it's so hard because, mm. I mean, at the end of the day, the fans will appreciate what. Mm. what works for them at the time. Mm. Like I could tell you at the moment, most people are probably uh, consuming more Shiba than they are consuming mm. any male artist. Mm. They are probably listening to more Boom Party than they are listening to any male artist out there. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, the public will consume what they want at the time. The only, the only problem is that the ground is non-leveled. Mm -hmm. uh, one, 
how to level the ground, I think, one, as a society, we need to police, mm -hmm. we need to stop policing women's bodies mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. I think at the moment there is a lot of policing when it comes to a woman's mm -hmm. body. Like, how is she dressing? Mm -hmm. Why is she dressing like that? That's so indecent. Mm -hmm. Like, let's face it, why is it that it's so easy for a guy to walk on stage without a shirt? But it's not easy for a woman to do the same. No, she doesn't have to do that. She just has to put on a short dress. And that's it. And, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think one, one, way is, one of the ways the, the ground can be leveled is mm -hmm. we stop policing women's bodies. Let's talk about the financial aspect. You know, money is synonymous with music. When it comes to mm -hmm. making the videos, even the film industry, when it comes to uh, shooting those uh, films, you need the money in that regard. And yeah. uh, women have been hit the hardest. For the men, you can hustle here and there and find the money. But the women, they've been hit the hardest. She has the talent. She would like to uh, join the industry, either music or film, but she does not have the money to do the same. And uh, some musicians have complained, female musicians mm -hmm. have complained about their managers or some producers uh, for both videos and audio that mm -hmm. uh, they ask for something in exchange for a service. Let's say if I go to a studio and I'm trying to shoot a video or uh, an audio mm -hmm. and I do not have the requisite money that the producer needs, they'll say, okay, I'll top up the rest for you if you do something for me. And, 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 by, the way, and by the way, that's just the beginning. Mm. That's, that's, just, that's just the beginning. You see, it starts with a producer that, mm -hmm. that wants to sleep with an artist. Mm -hmm. And then after they are done with that, the song is out. Mm -hmm. Like, you see, the easiest thing to do in Uganda is re record a song. Mm -hmm. Like, you can find any studio that can record a song mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But after you've recorded that song, you need that. That song needs to develop legs to move from one radio station, TV station to the rest. Uh, the, you, w you will talk to female artists that will tell you they went to a radio station and uh, the programmer was like, okay, good song, but uh, are you human enough? Mm -hmm. Like, these things keep coming <laughs> up. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. <laughs> I can't quit. <laughs> yes. Are you human enough? <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, you, you find that they are being harassed by mm. presenters, by programmers. Uh, then there will be a DJ. Like, it, the list is so long. The list is really long. Uh, but it still goes back to what I said earlier. Like what I said is uh, a man can get away with many things. When you look at the story of Jay-Z, mm -hmm. they will tell you Jay-Z sold drugs and yeah, like this part, part of his empire started with, yeah, doing quite a number of illegal mm -hmm. things, which is the story of many rappers mm -hmm. or many moguls in the U.S. When it comes to a woman, it's kind of hard to start like that because they will be judged mm -hmm. and because of that they will limit themselves you see when the men are getting into the industry they do not have money mm -hmm. but the difference is that there are those things that are not righteous mm -hmm. that they will do and they will mm -hmm. get away with it mm -hmm. that a female artist cannot do and get away with it mm -hmm. So what are the, some of the possible solutions, in your opinion, that we can actually employ in the interim to make sure that we bridge this gap? I, I don't know. And uh, stop this sexual violence from either the managers, the producers, the DJs. What can be done? Offer platforms True. where they can blow the whistle freely because they are not coming out to talk like, about like this. Like one, okay. When you ask the, a female artist, have, have you been sexually assaulted before? She'll be like, mm -mm. Yeah, until, 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 she, makes it, until yes. she makes it and... Mm. She has more freedom mm. and then she comes and says, yeah, when I was starting out, this and this happened. But, but you see, at, at the moment, you cannot find a way of, uh, at the moment, when it comes to the Ugandan industry, it becomes so hard to even say, these are the ways, or these are the steps you can take to maybe bridge the gap. Mm. Because I remember in 2018, at the Grammy Awards, most of the winners had been male. And uh, the president of the Grammys at the time, when he was commenting about it, he was like, I think female artists need to step up. Mm -hmm. And he was criticized for that. He, he actually didn't even come back for the next year because mm -hmm. like, there was a lot of backlash that he ended up stepping down. You see, the thing is, uh, at the moment, the people that are running the industry, many of the executives happen to be male. One, I could say, artists need to speak up. Mm -hmm. 
On the issue of sexual violence, I agree. On the issue of sexual violence, they need to speak up. And the best way of speaking up is involving their male counterparts. Mm. The only problem that with Uganda you will learn that their male counterparts are probably also abusers. Mm. So it becomes quite hard, but they need to speak up either way. So it will be hard for us to have some kind of Me Too movement of that sort in Uganda? It is possible, but mm. not in the Me Too essence. Mm. Mm. Much of the Me Too kind of happened mm. online, which mm. I don't think is the space we are on. With the OTT coming in the offing. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the employment opportunities music is offering to the DJs, PROs, the managers, producers, to mention but a few. But still, some people look at music and undermine it as a habitat for crooks, a career habitat for crooks. What mm -hmm. should we do in their interim to make it an organized and proper career for many? Uh, I think the very best way of organizing the industry starts with, okay, we do not have structures. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about structures starts with, um, with the way the government looks, as, looks at the creative industry. I won't mm -hmm. even say music. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look back at the 2016, um, the 2016 manifestos. Uh, I think I read Amama Mbabazi's manifesto and somewhere, there was somewhere where he said Atan culture mm -hmm. and he was talking about this sector. Uh, Bessie didn't have anything like that and Museveni, who happened to win, did not have anything like that, even if mm -hmm. he had very many artists on his campaign. In fact, in that manifesto, they talked about Atan culture as entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like there was that that line where they said entertainment and then they went on of how people are free to go out and in my mind I was thinking okay mm -hmm. like we, we are bigger than this mm -hmm. we are bigger than people going out and happening mm -hmm. like we are an industry that is employing a lot of people mm -hmm. employing a lot of technicians employing a lot of DJs mm -hmm. dancers actors choreographers stage designers like it's an industry that's doing a lot of things and then someone is looking at it as just entertainment. Mm. So starting from the top, this is an industry that's not structured because many people at the top do not understand how this works. Mm -hmm. They do not understand how this survives or how you're supposed to regulate it, how you're supposed to make it work. Mm -hmm. And that's, for me, that's where many of the problems of this industry start from. How is this industry supposed to work, ideally? Uh, one, this is a self-sustaining industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to just present as many opportunities. Mm -hmm. One, if you have very many foreign artists coming into the country, you need a policy around that. That, okay, if an artist is taking opportunities from Ugandans, we should find a way Ugandan is going to benefit from the lost opportunity. Mm -hmm. Either you're making that artist pay more in form of taxes, mm -hmm and that tax is going to be redirected to do this. Mm -hmm. For example, every day people are paying money to classify movies, foreign movies, mm. say Black Panther is showing at the cinema, that someone paid some money for that movie to be PG-16. Mm -hmm. But why is that money going? That money should be rechanneled directly back into the industry mm. to develop the industry. Mm. Like you're using the foreign market to actually mm. build this industry. but. We don't know what happens to that money. Let's talk about the concerts. Mm. You have very many con concerts that are being taxed. Every time someone stages a concert, mm. it's being taxed. But how much of that portion is actually going back into this industry? Indeed. So we need to start with those little things. And maybe people that are down will find a way of organizing themselves mm. to maybe appeal to the top that's already mm. organized but at the moment we don't even have a top that's organized mm. it becomes so hard for the down part to be organized as we want it to be mm. do you agree that government has to step up to the plate to actually come in and find a way of helping these people because like you mentioned in the 2015 manifesto they did not know how the industry works they just knew that people are free to go out there and party for them, it was just, we brought the peace and you are allowed to go out there, party into, until the wee hours. But they didn't understand that it's so hard 
for even the artists to make it to the stage. And even the platforms are not there. So how best can government create these platforms for our people, especially the upcoming artists? I don't know. Uh, they, some, they don't even have to create Some anything. kind of academy, like, music academy of sorts like, or like something. Truth or is they, they do not have to create anything. They have to empower. Like, the reason why some things are failing in the film industry mm -hmm. is because someone stepped up thinking they were going to do a lot of things mm. and then they noticed they can't do some of these things. Mm. Uh, you see, they do not have to do things, but they have to enable things mm. to happen. Mm. For instance, it would make a lot of sense if, um, say, UCC mm. is not organizing the film festival. Mm. Like, they have no business organizing the film festival. Mm. Do you think they are watching? <laughs> are they are watching. <laughs> <laughs> they, Best they, believe they, they don't really have any business organizing the film mm. festival, but the business they should be having is ensuring how our other festivals actually excelling. Mm. Like, I would be happy if instead of organizing a festival, they are supporting mm. other smaller festivals. Mm -hmm. Because those smaller festivals, one, are on the ground, mm. they are reaching more people. And, okay, if they decide to organize a festival, let mm. them say, we are organizing a festival, but every year we are going to sponsor a script to be turned into a film. Mm. Like, that's them directly creating an opportunity mm -hmm. that will create a ripple effect as time goes on. Create a PPP kind of uh, public-private partnership in that regard. Yes, but it will also have an effect like, once, you, once I get your script mm. for the right reasons mm. and I sponsor it, mm. uh, you, another person will be, will be inspired to do something of the caliber mm. that you did mm. to also get the same sponsorship. And even if they do not get it, they will have done way better than they would have done if mm. this sponsorship mm. is not around. But I do believe if we are to achieve that speedy development that we are looking for in the entertainment industry, government has to step up to the plate. I've been looking at most of the artists in Uganda, both from the film and the music industry. Andre, I grew up with the guy. He was actually hustling from day one. We were singing capellas by the age of eight. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be like Chris Brown. Well, me, I wanted to be a doctor or a journalist. But then I could really see that the situation, the environment we were in, it couldn't allow us to be musicians if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. You had Bobby Wine. You had Baby Cool Chameleon dominating the music industry. Mm -hmm. And the music industry was synonymous with fights. Mm -hmm. at the time. So at that time, if you didn't know how to flex, you wouldn't join the music industry. <laughs> it's, and, uh, it's because that's how they got papers uh -huh. to not. So that is them. music. Now, yeah. film on the other side. You have uh, Mr. Molindua. Uh, you know Richard Molindua. Yeah, he yeah. has struggled from day one with his office right there in Wakaliga, trying to push uh, limit productions. Mm -hmm. But it was so hard. But imagine if the government had its own foundation, where uh, Romeo Busiku, <laughs> who has no resources, but has the uh, visualization or the talent, would go very very well and just enroll <laughs> and get his talent you know chiseled huh? Tr refined. Tr tr truth is it's one of the things we've been talking about mm. like uh, we've been asking them to create some sort of a fund uh, we've been asking them to create a film fund mm -hmm. uh, to one the things you you get with a film fund are, are quite enormous mm. like when especially when you're a producer mm. or when you're a director mm. there are most there are more advantages Mm. with having a film fan and it's one of the things we've been mm. asking them to do mm. it's one of those things they keep promising that they will do mm. but still with the way we are disorganized right now even if we get a film fund mm. it might it might have it might land on very hard rocks mm. I, I still believe we need structures structures we need to we mm. need to find a way of putting together structures mm. to get this industry working. I mean, we miss out on many opportunities. Many people would have wanted to shoot movies in Uganda, mm. but the moment they try, and you know the opportunities that come with, uh, with people shooting films mm. in Uganda, that they will hire your actors, they will hire your crew people. Mm. But most of the times when these people come in and they notice they are no structures to work with, someone wants to know, okay, if I bring my multi-million film to Uganda, Am I getting a reimbursement or am I getting some sort of a tax holiday for every million mm -hmm. dollar I spend in Uganda? And when they notice many of these things are not outlaid or mm. someone has to call the president to mm. know if these people can get a holiday, mm. they're like, okay, you know what? 
let's, let's go to South Africa. They have everything checked out. Mm. Yeah. Do you think we need affirmative action in this in this country, especially in the entertainment of industry? Course, of course we do. Of course we for, do. Especially for those promoters. Oh, of if course. you have a lineup of 20 <laughs> men, make sure that half of that, they are women. Oh, of course we do. It's, it's one of those things that, that it, it's, it's so sad that at times mm. in Uganda we, yeah. we are usually arguing about different mm. things, mm. even as fans. Like you'll find, you'll find a poster that has four men mm. and one woman, and then people are arguing about the fact that artist so and so is not mm. on the poster mm. but this is one of the things we should be talking about we should be action. yes we should mm. be asking for more opportunities mm. for women we should be asking for more opportunities for ugandan artists i don't know why some brands should be bringing us nigerians when we have ugandans that have the appeal Amazing. I wouldn't have a problem with the Nigerians as long as they come in and they offer the advice and, the in and our local acts <laughs> get to perform. But as the international acts also offer the advice, the they moment, could be the spectators, uh, you know, in the crowd also <laughs> watching. And after they can be like, you know, appraising what they saw, but not being involved in the performance. Thank you for coming, Andrew Kagwa. He's You're an welcome. arts and culture journalist <laughs> with the Daily Monitor. And unfortunately, the show has come to an end. This is how we do it every Friday. It's infotainment on the go from 6.30 all the way to 9 a.m. Right about now, I'm go just going to read only one birthday. Uh, Carol Eve is saying, join me in wishing my friend Piloya Florence a happy birthday as we celebrate her today. And indeed, a happy birthday to you, Piloya Florence. Go out there and make it happen. The show is morning at NTV. Let's do this again next week. Have yourselves a blessed morning. And DJ Sowebi, take it away on the